Next up is creating Rem Lazar. Every child has a Rem Lazar. <laughs> Rem, Blue. Rem Lazar just sounds like an anagram. I'm just saying. It does. Uh, it means something <laughs> sickening. <laughs> uh, it's like a like a like a George Lucas name. Mm. Just just he took a normal word and just tried to change it a little bit. Yeah! Yay! <laughs> Let's find out about our Rem Lazars. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a musical. Yep. Answer the call and I'm See, don't hug me, I'm scared. Uh huh. That reminds me of that. Yeah, very much. <laughs> Remlazar saved the night, and Rich, you need to explain to us what creating Remlazar is. I'm still not sure what creating Remlazar oh, is. The entire time. Oh my god. Rem, Rem Lazar is a fascinating musical. This little boy and this little girl go to the school and they have the same imaginary friend. Zach, I've just about had it with your daydreaming in class. I wasn't just- And I will hear no more stories about your imaginary world. When you're in my classroom, this is the only world there is. No more stories. Listen to Dana Barrett. <laughs> it's a weird school where there's nothing on the walls, and the the boy gets sent to the the principal's office, and it's just for, for having imagination. How dare you? Yeah. Does he go to school in a hospital. <laughs> He makes his way to the principal's office singing while a shadowy figure hides in the fog behind it, it him. It looks like it follows. It's yeah. Like creepy. The way the kid's walking, too. I mean, he's got this dead look in his eyes, and it looks yeah, like his, like he's walking like his neck is broken. And, and none of the adults like imagination in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. No, it's a very, it's a very anti-snuffleupagus <laughs> kind of kind of world we're living in here. The, the boy's teacher hates imagination. The principal hates imagination. I don't think the question is what we're going to have to do with me, but what we're going to have to do with you, all of you. <laughs> Dude. Who are you talking to? I don't care. Nobody wants to listen. Not my parents. Not my teachers. Nobody. Principal the, Zod? The, yeah, the boy comes into Principal Zod's office and is like, do you have any children? Do you have any kids? I like to think that all the students in this school are my children. And he's clearly got a picture of his kids on his desk. And he doesn't want to talk about them. <laughs> what is that? What is that? You gotta believe me, it's not just my imagination. My patience is wearing thin with this nonsense. Then the little girl sees Rem Lazar too, and there's that scene with the two kids in the classroom where they're like, we're seeing this, we are in the same person in our dreams, yeah. and it feels like it's right out of Nightmare on Elm Street. When did you first meet Rem Lazar? I don't remember exactly. He was just always there whenever I needed him. Yeah, me too. Nancy, you dreamed about the same creep I did. You're having dreams about the same person. Good night, sweetheart. I don't enjoy having to punish you. I do it because I love you. <laughs> he pushing her for having an imaginary friend. <laughs> <laughs> I 
way I like that it doesn't quite line up. Yeah. Nope, psych. So yeah, so far all he's done is stalk someone in a hallway and watch a little girl sleep. <laughs> You're being a cynic, Jay. This is magical. <laughs> it's about children discovering their imagination. hurting my brain, yeah. like, like trying to figure out what it is. Can we just talk about the fact that they go to a, a, a deserted <laughs> barn and they suddenly have a mannequin with them? Where did this thing come from? They have to recreate their imaginary friend. It's the most logical thing to do once you learn you share an imaginary friend. You have to go we to an abandoned to barn. In an abandoned barn in the woods. Yeah. It wasn't creepy at all. Uh. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, I'm careful. Oh, God. From your <laughs> but there's a problem. He comes to life. Magically, he comes to life. Yeah. But he doesn't have his magic medallion that will bring him to life. Okay, so they need to find the medallion, which has been stolen by that thing from Power Rangers. Yeah. yeah. Ah! Oh, and Anton LeMay octopus. Yeah. <laughs> And it's somewhere up high. It's up oh, high. Oh, yes, yeah. It is hidden at the highest point that the mine can go. A place so high, most people are not able to find it in the course of their entire lifetime. And then he asks the little kids, he's like, what's the highest point you can imagine? And the little girl's like, oh, a mountain. And the kid's like, the moon. Yeah. The highest place you can imagine is the top of the World Trade Center. <laughs> A quixotic battalion will be there on September 1st of 2001. <laughs> September 10th. The morning of September 11th. <laughs> you have to be there to get the medallion. That's not it. That's the Empire State Building. It's really tall. It certainly is. But the building my dad showed me is much taller. And there's two of them. Oh, God. Oh, my oh God! God! No! <laughs> And they're completely identical to each other. Zach is just making up stories. No, really, I saw them. We believe Zach. <laughs> that was so random. <laughs> well, what do you think? It's high. They're there, Rich. I know. I'm just saying, Rem Lazar is behind 9-11. Oh. That's all I'm saying. Oh, Rem Lazar melts steel beans? <laughs> <laughs> With the power of imagination. <laughs> the power of imagination brought down the top. I mean, I guess what that's kind of true. What do you think the chaotic yeah. medallion's for? 9-11 yeah. <laughs> was a Rem Lazar job? <laughs> <laughs> it was. We didn't know. Creating Rem Lazar, destroying the World Trade Center. Ooh. Oh no! Oh, street gangs? Do whoppers? New York's toughest. <laughs> you know how it is. Do up gangs all in Central Park. <laughs> so what happens after they walk up to the World Trade Center? Oh, and they, they walk find, away. They find people singing doo wop in the park. Under sky shining bright, we've got it all. Yeah, we've kind of we've kind of skimmed over the songs. Yeah, they're all terrible, and they're the singing is awful. But we shouldn't skim over them because they happen so often. Yeah, every couple of minutes, there's another new song.
the musical journey through Central Park goes from doo-wop to rap. Hip hop. Hip hop, rap. We got it all. Out of sight. To, uh, and I was thinking in my brain as we were watching that they're going to do classical next. Oh, wait, that's too obvious. We got it all. We're going to run into some other genre? Yep. Yeah, we are. I was going to say they're going to do what meets hip hop meets classical. Because that's the next progression of like extreme Different. genres. Yeah. All on the way to 9 11. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, hey, look at this. Oh, little girl can play violin. She can play a tiny violin. How did she get there? It was just there. Maybe he was Satan, and you come by and you challenge him to like a fiddle duel. Oh. Yeah. That doesn't happen in Central that's Park, Rich. It's literally, it's in the lyrics. <laughs> And that is a historical document, that song. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Hate is contagious. And you're catching it. Laura, <laughs> please help from the bazaar. Please help us find the quixotic medallion. We don't want to be afraid of you. We don't want to hate you. What? <laughs> <laughs> Rich, I didn't know you were I, in this video. I totally wrote this. <laughs> like me? No one has ever liked me before. All you have to do to, to make somebody that you think is your enemy your friend is to say, you are my friend. My friends, I'm sorry for the problems I have caused. I only wish I could reverse them. So we're, where, where are we there? Oh, we're talking about yeah. the, let's, let's we're put talking about our back where it belongs. Yeah. <laughs> In the dumpster. Mike, that's yeah. a really nice shirt. Well, thank you, Josh. That's a good shirt. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Like a sweater. Like, is it's it nice. nice. It's warm? snazzy. It looks good on you. Uh, but so, so, so they learned a lesson where they learned to make friends with their enemy. But it didn't help them but at it all. it didn't do anything. Yeah. So then they just moved they on. They still had to find the highest place they could imagine, which it turns out is just love. It's just love. They're ready to drink that Kool-Aid. <laughs> and it was a whole, the whole thing was a dream sequence and the two of them were in that weird abandoned barn with a mannequin. Yeah, and that's when the cop came in. And yeah. was like, whoa. I think you better leave the doll here, son. The officer was like, why do I keep finding little children in this barn with yeah. mannequins? You should go home, don't bring the doll. Yeah, leave, leave that weird mannequin. Where did you find it? Someplace very high. Did you find it in a tree? Even higher than that. I don't know anything higher than the trees. <laughs> World Trade Center. Well, that's not very high anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good transition. Yes. Because we, we've dissected what happens in Rem Lazar. But let's, let's look further. Why was Rem Lazar made? I we, have we are no idea. We are speculating that it's a failed pilot. Yeah. Because it's like 45 series? minutes, yeah. which with commercials it would be... eight minutes, which is like two half-hour episodes yeah. once you factor in commercial breaks. In your heart, I live forever. In your dreams, we'll be together. You and I. Imagination has no end. Adventures to be shared with friends like Ren Lazar. Ren it, it has all the like the hallmarks of like a kids show. It also has this undercurrent where it's like, is this some sort of like subtle cult introduction? Yeah, we've the, we, through the whole thing, we're waiting for it to take that turn, yeah. and it never does. And then we're watching through the credits, and it's got like a couple therapists in there, so it's like, oh no, it's really all surface. If you change like the the, the highest thing you can imagine, if that if that if that's God and the whole thing is like belief because faith, then this video makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. But, but it that doesn't was never work it. there. <laughs> it was, the highest thing was never God. The highest thing was imagination. No love. But it's just the most generic things you can imagine, which yeah. makes me think they didn't give a shit about the message. They, well, I think they were just trying to come up with a generic message that would appeal to kids and appeal to PBS or some yeah, some sure. network. We're, we're looking at gen, we're looking at generic positive. Like, do you feel better than you did when you started watching creating Rem Lazar? 
<laughs> I mean, we did. <laughs> I did. The adventures that we shared. You, you walked through a park and got lost. <laughs> <laughs> I feel dirty saying Rem Lazar. Like, it sound, there's something kind of like, it's like the word kumquat, where it sounds dirty, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like oh. Rem Lazar, like I feel like I'm saying something where it's like someone's gonna point out what that really means. We, we attempted to break down the name Rem Lazar. At first, we thought it might be an anagram. It was an unanagrammable. No. <laughs> then, then we what thought Rem, 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 Rem memory, sleep, yeah. uh, uh, rapid eye movement. Oh, thank you. When you're when you're in deep sleep, when you you achieve Rem sleep, yeah. it was when you're when you're asleep. Yeah. So clearly. He Rem comes to you in your dreams, yes. like, like Freddy Krueger. What is Lazar? That's laser with the two the vowels, vowels switched. switched. So laser's an acronym. Yes. And Rich has it up on his phone right now. Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Also, taser is an acronym. Yes, uh, a taser is an acronym, uh, which comes from... Thomas A. Swift's Electric Rifle? Yes, which was a, a book from 1911 where a fictional character named Thomas A. Swift went on a safari hunt with an electric rifle. And he was shooting elephants he and was hippos. Shooting game with, an with electric his electric rifle. rifle. So whoever invented the taser multi many decades later. It, would, it wasn't Thomas A. Swift. <laughs> no, that was a fake book. Yeah. <laughs> it was some guy. So what you're saying is the taser was named after this book. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the book Six was years and later. And also the word Lazar sounds like bizarre. Lazar, I, th <laughs> I, I think is French for lizard. Oh, oh. oh. So th that's why all these. Oh these my God, like, he's a reptilian. <laughs> he's a dream lizard. See, all these things are like creepy and weird or like, like lasers and, for, and violence. For, and for a moment, I thought Lazar was Lazarus. Oh! Uh, a a oh. biblical reference from of the, coming back from back. the dead, yeah. but that's L A. So we have yeah. we have we have we have um we have acronyms uh -huh. and and Listen. anagrams and Area Fifty One reversed vowels. Area Fifty One. Area Fifty One. Bob Lazar. Oh Whoa. my God! Bob Lazar broke the case on the the, the Area Fifty One. <laughs> what phone? does that have to do with the Twin Towers, Rich? <laughs> <laughs> it's all connected. They're gonna shut the program down. Everybody save this! Oh my god! Stop! Stop! Project Blue Book! What? What? His that hair! Oh my god! Brem Lazar was made by oh! you! <laughs> Let's go find the Twin Towers. All right, Jay, take us home, Jay. Uh, Rich, best of the worst. Rem Lazar! I, it doesn't, yeah. It my... solved everything. All the world's questions and problems in one videotape. From another place, not from outer space. From some place even higher. Rem Lazar.